Guys, welcome back to the channel. I figured I'd do another update because a lot has changed. Right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for new videos. Those who follow my Instagram would have seen me making this uh, screen for it. So I figured I'd do another one now. Uh, so obviously the biggest change is the screen. Um, it's pretty big. <laughs> it's a... Uh, custom job um, but it's pretty really simple to make it's just three millimeter MDF um, by frame as you can see and it's being run by two BenQ 108 ST projectors that have mounted in the roof uh, cabling goes up there down through the wall to the computer which is down here um, I'll do another whole video on the computer but I've upgraded that uh, you can see the view is pretty epic it's just sitting cold at um, Nevada at the moment, but as opposed to when it was just thrown on a straight wall, it's pretty epic. It's a full 180 degree curve, as you can see. Um, um, it's actually DCS is outputting two viewports, and then there's software called Fly Elise that is uh, warping it. Uh, so it looks a bit curved when you're sitting here, but when your head is where my head is. The view is basically perfect, 180 degrees. Alright, so these are the ribs that form the base structure of the um, screen. Now, there's two of them for each 90 degrees. All they are is 16mm MDF. I bought a large sheet of MDF and then I just drew them by hand. Uh, nothing special, no fancy laser cutter. All I did was bang a nail in, measure a bit of string, uh, tie a pencil to the string and make a curve. Uh, I then cut six of them all out and, and to even them out, I, pretty basic, put them on top of each other, screwed them together and then when they were all one big thickness, just hit them with a belt sander so they're all the same. Um, and once I got them all basic the same shape, they were done. Uh, so all they do is, there's, you see there's a frame on the end, uh, a post, a post in the center, a post there, top gets glued to it. Here's a photo of what that looks like. Um, and then the skin, which is just thin three millimeter MDF and bends really easily, uh, gets bolt, uh, screwed to it in a few positions, but mostly just glued and clamped until it dries. Here's the screen before paint. Uh, I've just finished the construction of it uh, You can see I've still got parts for a third piece. So they're 90 degrees I'm eventually going to end up with 270 degrees, but for now I've only got two projectors So I'm just running with 180 degrees until I get that projector uh, It's three millimeter MDF is the surface um, It's it was pretty easy. It's simply If you look on the back here, it's just a frame uh, 95 by 35 structural timber, three beams on each panel, and then a little, the curve was cut out of a large piece of MDF, uh, and then the skin's glued to it. Uh, each part's bolted together with three bolts. Uh, that leg is in the center. You can see I've made it so it screws into each side. The whole thing disassembles rather than gluing that on and then each leg on the end is just bolted on uh, it's 50 mil off the ground uh, so in my seating position my eyes should be sort of dead in the center of it uh, so you can see it's got a pretty good curve to it all right so now i'm going to hit it with matte white on the back and matte white on the front just for a primer and then i'm going to use a I'm not using an expensive screen glue, uh, screen goo, that's like $170 a litre. I'm just making up my own using uh, Black Widow, which is a, a recipe that's found on the internet. Pretty easy to do. It's just a, uh, a grey with some aluminium in it. Alright, let's paint. Oh, one thing, you can see there's a little, there's obviously a gap where the, the uh, two parts join. Now when it's 180 degrees, that gap is going to be right in the center of where I'm looking. 
but when it's when I get the third bit on the center will be dead center in there so you'll sort of have that gap I'm just going to run a bit of tape down the center of it so there's no gap and when I spray the screen glue I'll spray over the top of that as well so hopefully it won't be that obvious uh, right paint <laughs> And you can see is a full 180 degree view it's pretty epic uh, there is a few drawbacks to it um, one you get a bit of a screen door effect uh, not as much as in VR obviously but it's just the nature of stretching to 180p images over something that's 2.4 meters wide and 1.2 meters tall um, so it's not 100% perfect, it's not the same as looking at an LCD screen that was this size and wrapped around, but then again, this cost me $150 to make, not how much would an LCD cost this big? $20,000 for a curved one probably. Um, the other limitation is the join is right down the centre. Because I've made it in 90 degree sections, the aim is to eventually have 270, so you'd be looking right in the centre of this and there'd be no join. However, the two projector images overlap right in the center at the moment so you have to ensure that when you're aligning the projectors you get the alignment right in that center bit which is the most important perfect because you'll find that the HUD will be blurry if it's out by even a millimeter the problem with that is these projectors are mounted with cheap projectors and temperature changes in the roof and all that sort of thing it's easy for the projectors to dip down move up a little bit just with heat changes so basically, every time I run the sim, I have to calibrate the image. I've got it down to a, you know, it only takes me a couple of minutes now, but it's a pain in the ass nonetheless. Because you'll turn it on, you'll see that it's blurry. You'll put it on the grid to calibrate the software, and you'll see that usually it's this projector has dropped slightly. And rather than going up there and moving it around and trying to get perfectly lined again, I just recalibrate the image. It's a bit easier. Um, all right. Let's fire it up. All right, so here I am sitting in the pit. You can see the view I get when I turn my head is pretty cool. Um, all right, let's fire it up. Please ignore my incorrect startup procedures, but it's been a while and I'm not doing a tutorial on how to start an A10. I'm just showing you everything. So they, that's that on, APU on. It's pretty epic. Hard to do this when I'm looking through the screen and not. Let's the APU gen. Power. Let's go for this bit test. There it goes. Uh, this one's missing a switch top, only because I had to swap the switch and I haven't got around to putting my one, but I will eventually. Put that to test and it'll give me a hug and just barely make it out. We'll go through its bit test. And in the meantime, if it's right at that engine, that's the start cycle. 
turn that on, I'm going to loosen up that knob, uh, tighten up that knob. Kennedy, so it gets a bit quieter in here. Left hand, right hand, happy jam can turn off. The engines are all good, which means I can turn off the APU. Right, the air on, radar altimeter on. Alright, nose wheel steering. Let's taxi out. You can see, like, it's, it's pretty cool. So it is so obviously the frames per second are not perfect. Um, it's running a 1080, sorry, a 1080 Ti graphics card, but it's running an old CPU and only 16 gig of RAM and off an old SSD too. So I'm hoping it when I update the motherboard, that bottleneck from the CPU will fix my frames. I've also noted that it must be a limitation with DCS because when I export these and the CPU screen, the FPS drops massively. Like it's smooth as silk when I'm just running the main screen without the extra two monitors. So I don't know why that is because these wouldn't be drawing that much um, processing power off the graphics card. But anyway, is what it is. Um, I've, I've seen other people mention, mentioning that on the forums too, so I'm not the only one receiving that FPS drop. Plus, I've got it on pretty high settings at the moment, just because I was trying to push the envelope to see what the 1080 Ti could do. Um, so I'm sure if I scale it back a little bit, it'll probably be a bit smoother. When I, the funny thing is, it's running pretty good. Look, it's running pretty good. You can see on the edges here that there's no warping at all because it's a separate viewport. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. is hard to capture how immersive, immersive it is with a display this big. Taking some pretty serious hits in the frame rate right now, but the closer you get to the ground, the uh, harder it hits. I just need to tweak the settings a little bit, and like I said, hopefully it's just a bottleneck with my CPU, which is a I'm still running a 4700K, I think, which at the moment is on stock settings, so it's only running like 3 gig. Once I get a 9700K running 5 gig, hopefully I'll see an improvement. Pull up, pull up. 
とこhere that toggles my cockpit so you can see the perspective is pretty good because so this cockpit these little notches here are supposed to be where the canopy frame goes so you can see from where I'm sitting the canopy frame would pretty much line up with it so you're basically getting the same sort of view that you would be at the same sort of bit where the canopy frame would be coming into if that makes sense Anyway, that's all I got here today. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. You know what I'll do? 